What's up, guys? So today on the podcast, we're going to continue on with our uh, Rules for Jiu-Jitsu series. We started this up uh, a couple weeks ago, and there was a, an idea that I shared. Got some pretty good feedback from it. And so I wanted to continue on. These are just some ideas to chew on, some you know, you don't have to, I don't like maybe necessarily the word rules, but you know, they can be a working framework, but they're just ideas to uh, be useful to you uh, in your training and your path in jujitsu. And so I uh, hope you got, you guys like this one. Hopefully you enjoy it and get something from it. It's probably going to stir a few feathers. Um, it just tends to happen. But uh, again, if you listen to the idea, I think it'll be useful to you. Um, that said, thanks to our sponsors. Got Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web is my favorite CBD company. I've tried several over the years. Um, it's the only one that I could find that was incredibly consistent with the product itself. Where again, I've I've tried several CBD products over the years, and I always noticed there was these different fluctuations in the feelings that I would get. Again, I'm very in tune with my body. I'm not one of those people that, you know, like I, I, I measure my coffee. I eat, I drink coffee at particular times of the day. I take certain supplements with my workouts and particular times. They, everything is very precise and, and, and done in a particular way. I, I weigh my food for God's sakes, right? I'm trying to be very particular about how to do things, be precise, precision, right? I want to be pr uh, precise with what I do things just like on the mats. I want to be precise with my movements. If I move, I want there to be a purpose to it, not just simply wasting something, right? And um, Charles Webb's like that. It's something I, I definitely get a value from it uh, with my rest, uh, with my recovery, um, with my overall s sense of well-being. Um, I know you do, right? I um, love it. I, so, sleeping, sleeping's been huge for me. It's been, um, it's like it, it's one of the things the regimen that, that I have with it. Once you find that, I think it's very valuable, and, and you realize how much better. Now you take yours are. in the. Do you take yours in the morning? So yeah, I do. I do a couple different things. So I do. Uh, I do a tincture. I actually do the 60 milligram uh, tincture in the morning yeah. and then I do the sleep gummies at night. Okay. Um, that's just what works for me. Um, I, I think it's, it's just, I find that I'm, I sleep better mm -hmm. and um, I can get back to, I can get to sleep better, even get yeah, back yeah, yeah. to sleep a little better. You know, uh, some of us that have kids, I like to be up at one thirty yeah, in the yeah. morning. Uh, it's hard to get back to sleep. So I feel like just my sleep, I, I, I'm able to get back to a good restful sleep. So um, for sure, if and everybody's going to have a different kind of right. you know regimen or what works for them that's what works for me mm -hmm. um but it's been helpful that was one of the things i noticed when i uh when i when i stopped taking it la uh earlier last year i remember if i woke up in the middle of the night let's say to use the bathroom or something it was hard to get back to sleep mm. when when i take it i seem to get back to sleep easier don't know. I don't know what there is about that. But again, it's just one of these things where and that's where it kind of goes back to. I take things out of my regimen. Let's see how it works. Put it back in. OK, like I, I feel the difference. So I have a contrast. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, again, if you guys want to check them out, uh, their website is charlottesweb.com. Promo code is jujitsu. Say 15 percent on the order. Uh, and again, going back to the sort of consistency of it, they're third party tested. Most CBD is not third party tested. So whatever you're getting in it, you have no clue what you're getting in it. Um, just like me, like I used to get some different stuff and sometimes I would feel nothing. Sometimes I would feel friggin' high. Yeah. Um, I mean, like talking about like, like wandering around my gym, like, Hey bro, <laughs> you know, like, so you don't know, but the third party test is so everything that says, if you look on the back of it, there's a label, that's what's in it. That's what is actually in the stuff, uh, rather than sort of just rolling the dice and getting something. So if you want to check their website out, charlesweb.com promo code is jujitsu, uh, 15% off. I love their stuff. And they are now officially certified organic that mm. matters to you it takes a it's a very difficult process oh, takes many organic, years well because of the soil and everything else it's, it's organic it takes yeah. like five years to mm. like do that i think and uh they were i was talking to bryce who's one of my contacts at charlotte's web yeah. and um he said that you know it's something that they're really proud of and it's you know we might get to go out there and check out the farm, which would be real cool. But um, be, them being organic is kind of a big deal, and um, they've already done that. But mm -hmm. it takes a long time to get that label right. I think it, it, there's a, there's a there's a period of like time that you have to do yeah. to do it. I've seen it before because they do the same thing with food. Yep. Uh, and big thanks to our sponsor, Epic Roll. If you guys have not done so yet, you should check their stuff out at epicrollbjj.com. Um, I always uh. I always kind of smile a little bit, like one of my uh, students comes in with one of the with yeah. one of the geese or shirts or whatever. Um, he uh, just the other day, someone came in with the uh, the what did, what did he call that one? The one with all the crazy stuff on it last year. Urban legend. Urban legend. The urban legend uh, rash guard. Which, a shirt and a rash guard. Which is it's. Them. It's it's awesome. Um, you know, there's like he's got all these like different things like there's Sasquatch and there's 
UFOs and there's was it 5G or whatever. 5G, there's 5G, COVID, stuff, COVID, there's you know, a, things like that. So, uh, yeah, it, Sasquatch, and then there's also the what's the other one? What's the other animal? Loch Ness? No. May, is there a Loch? I, I don't know, know if there is. I don't. Know. Anyway, it's um, it, is it, Sasquatch the same as Bigfoot or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it the same? Yeah. Well, I okay. guess so. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not a Bigfoot person. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it, a lot of cool stuff. Though I, I'm a big fan of his designs. I really like his stuff. Like his stuff is kind of. It's one of the few jujitsu companies that sent me stuff that like I like to wear mm -hmm. because sometimes they'll send me stuff and I'm like ah, I don't really like this I don't I don't want to wear this um, sometimes the quality sucks like this this is this is one of my big big pet peeves I hate getting a T-shirt and it being hard like like nasty cotton yeah. it's like just rough you know all shirts are super soft and comfortable and then the designs are cool they're subtle enough where like you can just wear them and it's not it doesn't scream anything crazy. You know, like you can, you can wear them and feel okay in a normal situation. And then they're also, you know, kind of neat because there's some sort of jujitsu thing theme going on there that sometimes isn't necessarily like just jujitsu plastered on something. It's kind of like a little bit more subtle where mm -hmm. again, you're kind of on the inside, but I like all the stuff. And if you want to check it out, big fan of his designs, epic roll, bjj.com promo code is jujitsu, say 15% on the order. And uh, you can check that stuff out. And last, but certainly not least, Manscaped. So, I recently tried their the little razor. The razor, yeah. I forgot what the 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 smooth. What is it? The I forgot. Oh, called? I, I forgot the name of it because it, it comes in this little package. But it's a it's a razor with a exfoliant and a gel, and you put in that gel is sticky, huh? Like it's. It, but I love the smell. It's like very woodsy. Um, I, I like I like all the stuff that they have. One of my big Th things about it is I love the smell of it. Yeah, they've all everything smells good. The uh, one, one time a guy sent me some some stuff one time and I was bummed out about it because I was excited. It was a it was a I think it was like a beard oil or something and it was like very like flowery. Mm. I was like it was too sweet. I was like I don't want to smell flowery. I want to smell like a man. Musky, musky. Well, no, just kind of got that woodsy. So it's almost like, <laughs> it smells like it has like tea tree or something in it. Yeah, um, that kind of thing. But it smells great. Uh, but used it and it works very well. So I was able to uh, trim the downstairs with the little razor, and it did. You're a risky, I risky was, fellow. I was a little nervous, man. But that gel is actually really neat because the gel sort of creates this layer. I even used it on my face. Just, yeah. I just wanted to test. I was like, hey, let me well, you try. probably could shave your face with them. Sure. You, you could. Yeah. So I, I, I tried it on my face. I was like, let me try this gel out because it's almost like sticky. So I tried to put it on my face and like it sticks to it. You don't have this big like fluffy thing like, uh -huh. like shaving cream. But then when I'm shaving, it slides right down. So again, they're... Sometimes, you know, it, it's one of these things as a guy, like, that's not something like you don't necessarily like make, oh, this, this is my downstairs trimmer, you know, but uh, I, I've tested their, all their products that they give me. I test them on my downstairs and upstairs from my beard down to my balls. We've tested them all. B to B. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a fantastic product. So I'm a big fan. So if you guys want to check them out, you can go to manscaped.com. Um, their trimmer's good. It's lightweight. It's portable. It's waterproof. Um, and their razor is good. I said, I've tested that one out. Their cologne smells amazing. Mm -hmm. So if you want to test out any of their stuff, I haven't tested out everything they have, but I guarantee you it's good quality. Everything from them that I've gotten, everything from the packaging down to the actual product itself has been fantastic. So if you want to check their stuff out, manscaped.com, promo code is jujitsu20. You save 20% on the order and you get free shipping. It's a pretty good deal. So take advantage of it. And uh, guys, if you want to support the podcast and if you'd like to get some cool content and if you'd like to talk to me in person and, and, and if you'd like to talk to me in person, um, here's the way to do it. Our Patreon at patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast. We put in little chunks of content every week uh, that gets uploaded. Sometimes it is a little conversation with me and Eugene, a little podcast extra. Sometimes it's with the guests that we had on the podcast. Other times I'll put up videos and things like that where you can see me training techniques or me rolling, me doing a narrated breakdown, sharing sometimes diet or uh, workout related stuff. It can be a number of different things. Uh, stuff to just kind of help you out with your training and also give you some entertainment. And then we also have a tier where if you'd like right now, we're doing it typically it's about one. Sometimes I get a little gutsy and I'll do it every week. Sometimes it's every other week, but it's typically twice at least a month where I will get in on a zoom call and uh, basically you'll be able to join. I chat with the people that are there. I typically have a couple ideas to, to share with you something maybe to think about for your training. And then from there we do a live Q and a, we kind of hang out. Um, so if you guys want to check that out, you can go to patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast and get access to it. And uh, guys, with that said, let's jump into the podcast.
What's up, guys? So today we're going to do our rules for jiu-jitsu, our BJJ rules. Uh, eventually, we'll probably have a cool name for it. Our BJJ players, I guess you could say, because you know, BJJ player is the term we use, right, when you compete. Like a judo player, BJJ player, yeah. BJJ practitioner, rules, whatever you want to call it. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a nice set name later on. But rules for jiu-jitsu. And um, today's, we did one of these so far. This, to the second one that we're going to do today is to be an anti-martial artist. Now, some of you guys who might pride yourself on being a martial artist, this might make you really irritated or cringe. Or um, some of you that have done other martial arts and you're now dab dabbling into this, you might be like, hey, Chewie, wait, on a, wait a second. Just follow me here for a second, okay? So me and my student the other day, one of my brown belts, we were talking about uh, blood sport. And we were talking about the UFC. So we were talking about how like back in the day, you know, Bloodsport was like my favorite movie growing up. And then when the UFC came out, it was like, it was the thing. Mm -hmm. It was every martial artist's mouth watering dream to see which style was the best because everybody back then, even then back back way back. I mean, you saw this as back as some of the old Bruce Lee movies where they'd have like enter the dragon and stuff, right? They're going to, they're going to fight each other. But there was always this question of which one's the best. Always. It was always there because there wasn't a lot of intermingling between the styles. Right? You would do your martial art and you did your martial arts. Someone else would do their martial arts. But I remember we always were curious. And then UFC came out and um, we got to see. We got to see like which ones worked. Granted, there was a bit of cherry picking with who they pick sometimes. You still got a good idea of like, well, how does this stuff work? Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, just to kind of like see how like, how much this was this sort of weaved itself into the martial arts culture back then i remember as a young kid i was a i was a yellow belt i had uh done my little form and broken a piece of bossel wood um for you for you for you young people that may not know what bossel wood is it's like they have these little planes and it's the lightest wood ever and you can literally like breathe on it wrong and it breaks um you know like basically yeah broke the broke the board good for me um if you guys have listened to the podcast, you may know the story. Basically, they I didn't even train to break the board. They just like it was that day and they like, they put the board in front of me and I could either palm strike it, chop it or kick it or something. And I told, chose a palm strike. I was super nervous because I'd never practiced it. I even asked them, I was like, do I need to practice this first? And they're just like, you know, I feel like it was almost like we're on a carnival ride. Like, come on, kid, let's get this thing moving. This is for entertainment purposes we're, only. <laughs> right. You know, it's like, so then I, I, I you know, I, I barely hit it. it cracks. Here you go. Good job. Clap. Okay, good. Move next. Um, and even as a kid, I kind of had some questions about that. I was like, oh, it was a little too simple. Um, but so even back then when I was a yellow belt in Taekwondo, me and some of my buddies, we used to fight in the backyard and uh, we, 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 we would watch blood sport and we would do whatever we would do what most young boys do. We would watch stuff and we would mimic it. Right. I mean, I don't know if, if anybody watched pro wrestling, you know, at some point you jumped off your couch, like it was the turnbuckle onto your poor buddy that was loaded up with like the couch cushions on the ground and you like <laughs> you gave him the flying elbow right everybody, everybody did it and so we went out we would go out in the backyard and we would just fight each other beat the crap out of each other but i remember one of my buddies did karate and we would like we would say let's see who the best is let's let's see which style is the best granted neither one of us are a good representation of that style so one did uh he one did, did karate and i did, did i did taekwondo he okay, did karate and so we would go and i mean our our skills were awful terrible um my ability to kick past my hip was not there. I mean, like I would just like, I mean, like they, they used to laugh at me. They're like, how do you do Taekwondo? You can't even kick, you know? And that's like, kind just, of, this is, you're like, you remind me, I'm just thinking of like Hulk Hogan when he was older, like doing like that leg, that leg yeah. drop or whatever he yeah, does. He barely, barely lift his leg yeah. up. I mean, it, it was, I mean, <laughs> I've always had kind of tight, like tight muscles. Yeah. I've always been tight and kind of rigid. Um, it's not something that developed <laughs> just later. So it was, it was even at the kid level right now. When, I, when I'm saying about this martial artist thing, here's what I'm getting at. When you look at, say, MMA as an example, it's taking a lot of, it's changed and a lot of iterations have happened. And, you know, when these people are in these, these fights and stuff like this, you watch as people hang on to a style or something like that and then they get left behind. Because people are constantly evolving, constantly changing, mm -hmm. and they're constantly bringing in new weapons, adjusting different ones and everything else. And it's constantly in, in evolution. It's a young sport still. So it's, it's evolving a lot. Jiu-Jitsu is the same way. 
if I look at jujitsu now compared to what it was when I first started, there's some similarities there for sure. But the level is way different. First off, I think the level is much higher now. I can tell yeah. you, I can tell you right now. I agree. If one of my blue belts was to roll with me when I first got my blue belt, they would beat the brakes off me. I might give them a little bit of a fight, but they are much more technical. They know what they're doing. They have a much better grasp of their game because they have a better system coming up. And then if you look at the way that it's being used, it's very different. And a lot of martial arts have had their influences on jujitsu, what we consider jujitsu now, because the, the best jujitsu practitioners, in my opinion, are their technique mercenaries, right? They don't care if they're supposed to do it this way or that way or whatever way, or if this is part of their martial art or whatever, they're just going out and grabbing stuff and seeing if it works. Yeah. I mean, you can see this even back in like some of the old, the Gracie's like Hicks and Gracie was, you know, he was, he was known to go train with wrestlers and stuff like that and learn stuff from uh, the, the late holes. Gracie, he was supposed to have, been very interested in other types of like grappling arts and things like that to learn from them, like wrestling and everything else when wrestling wasn't really that big of a deal. This is back in, I guess like what the eighties or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, and when we look today, we see things like lots of leg locks. We see uh, different types of throws being used. We see different types of takedowns and we see these, uh, these other influences coming in. And, you know, this is one of the things where you have to maintain that beginner's mind, right? That I don't like, and by beginner's mind, I just mean that you don't know everything because in the beginning, it's easy to be that way, but then we get locked in at a certain point. If we're not careful, once we get a little bit of skill and proficiency under us, because it's not fun to go back to being the beginner again, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so for instance, we saw this a lot with leg locks. We saw a lot of high level black belts that were competing some that weren't and they were vehemently against leg locks they were like oh they're dangerous or this they're at whatever obviously we know they're not that bad like it's just like any other martial art or any uh technique mm. but you see that now where some of these guys got left behind because they chose not to adapt because that was not a part of their style right it was not a part of their martial art that they did and when i use this idea of anti-martial art what i'm getting at is when i think of like the martial arts back in the day and like what i think of when i think of this sort of quintessential martial art i think of this person who's practicing their style their martial art their thing and then they become kind of closed off to what else is out there and so what i would ask people to do if you want to be good at jujitsu you have to be open whether it's from another art entirely or if it's even someone maybe some of you guys get better over time or maybe you you're already really good you're a black belt right then you can you can learn from your students i've learned plenty of stuff from guys that are under me like i've had blue belts come up to me and say chewy like this is this thing i've been playing around with mm -hmm. and i'm looking at them like hey i've never seen that before that's nifty mm -hmm. you know um i just went to costa rica and i learned a few details on a guillotine that like change my guillotine around completely. And so, you know, you're always learning, you have to be in that mindset. And so to me, that's, it's that way of sort of not becoming closed off. And a lot of martial arts back in the day used to be closed off and a lot of jujitsu people like, um, it's interesting. You see this thing where jujitsu practitioners will tell someone to do grappling. Let's say they do boxing, kickboxing or something. They'll tell them to do jujitsu hey, mm -hmm. you should try this out person's like nah man i don't want to do that and they'll say bro don't be so close-minded do it it's 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 really cool you'll love it nah i don't want to do it nah, you're being close-minded but then you see that same thing within our art itself where something's working or maybe someone tells them to try this thing no nah, i'm not going to do that it's, it's too dangerous or it's this it's that whatever and you can rationalize anything you can make up plenty of excuses as yeah. to why you don't want to do something um it, we all do but it's when it comes down to it you know, you're becoming closed off. And so that's my idea. When I'm saying be, being an anti-martial artist, I'm not saying, you know, not learn how to do martial arts because that's what we do. What I'm saying is don't go into it with the old school mentality that a lot of people saw, right? Where you became closed off because it wasn't a part of your style. It's not your particular martial arts. So I'm not going to practice it. You know, nothing else has anything else to offer. You know, that's another thing sometimes with jujitsu practitioners that they get kind of bad about where, you know, if it's not a part of what they've seen, they'll say ah, that, that all that stuff's garbage, you know, um, to other stuff because it's not what they think is effective, even though there might be some gems within that that you can kind of pluck out 
you know, because the, yeah. the training methodology may not be there, but there might be some good little locks. Like there's an Aikido wrist lock that I know how to do. Um, I learned it from a friend. <laughs> it's legit. Like it, it, it's not the one where they flip and they whatever, but it's a really neat one off the the hand and the yeah. right here. It's yep. super neat. And it's like, it comes on quick and it wasn't from jujitsu. I learned, I learned it, learned it from a guy who learned it from Aikido, you know? So it's like, yeah. I mean, so again, Aikido, I don't really like it as an art necessarily. I wouldn't want to practice it. If someone does that, that's their own prerogative. Right. But, but there's a little gym in there that I could pluck out. Right. Um, and even in wrestling, there's lots of really cool techniques from wrestling that can be adapted to jujitsu. And I've done them, you yeah. know, and so the, the key is there being the anti-martial or simply just keeping a beginner's mind and not becoming that, that, uh, stereotypical martial artist who is closed off, who's done what they did and they learned that it, that their style or their system, whatever, and that's it. No mm -hmm. more, no mas and that kind of thing. So you want to be, you want to fight against that. And that's a, that's a urge that all of us have to fight against. And it's something that's pervasive in everything we do, not just jujitsu, but everything. Um, because yeah. whether it's you see this kind of thing, whether it's in like the scientific community where people get like theories locked in and they're like, this is my theory. And then when people come up with new theories, I mean, they're trying to shoot them down left and right. Granted, right. there's some scrutiny there, but at the same time, they're very resistant to learning them because well, this is, this is my theory. You know, you see this in like in all aspects of our life where sometimes we get a little rhythm going in a, a particular routine and something has to change and we don't want to change. You know, so you have to be, you have to fight against that. If you want to be good at jujitsu to me, if you want to be really good, um, because the sport is still, the sport of it is still young and the, the art itself is not really that old in its current iteration where it's just the proliferation of movements and techniques are being shared so rapidly mm -hmm. that the art's changing so quickly. Um, and so, you know, you have to, uh, you have to be open to that stuff. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think like, even if you look at sport jujitsu, versus self-defense jujitsu, right? Sure. It, it, jujitsu kind of started as this thing, the little guy, the weaker person, even you can see in the old Gracie commercials, they had these commercials in Brazil, oh, yeah, like yeah, this yeah. weak, I saw, I remember seeing a commercial with this guy is, is like hanging out with his girlfriend and this bigger guy walks up and just pulls her up and walks away. Yeah, it he, was a adaptation of the old Atlas com commercial. Yeah, Atlas so, had the same thing, like but he would go lift some weights and he right, would go beat the guy. Right. So yeah, so that was kind of funny. Uh, seeing that and and you know and Alio's whole thing was kind of that it was a marketing ploy essentially. Of course. Oh yeah. And it was it was cool to see that. Um, but then like you know the knowledge spreads and you kind of understand that okay now if you know jujitsu and I know jujitsu but you're stronger or more athletic then okay then what what now uh -huh. then skill is is a huge thing. <clears throat> but um, the self defense like you know even the sport jujitsu like I think the sport jujitsu has evolved and i think it's also evolved in a way that's helped the self-defense side i mean <coughs> for example lapels right you know i mean <coughs> lapel guards and stuff like that i think some of that is is strictly for the gi that's but sport, yeah. but also in self-defense aspect that could be very very useful some of these chokes or some of these ways to use the clothing and uh i, I think that's opened up more self-defense techniques essentially um you know just from from that sport side of it and so, I think also with the self-defense, I'll be honest, if you're listening to this, like, the, you know, when I look at some of the old school self-defense stuff, yeah, it's, I don't, I don't agree with it at all. Like, because I like what, you know, like where like, it's these weird, like these really elaborate th it, to me, it, it, it's, it's like, a, it's, it makes a cool demonstration. But like the guy comes up and like grabs you by the neck and you're going to like, like step in and like whatever. And, and hip toss him. It's like, it, the thing is you never see it you don't see it the thing is even like with like seasoned practitioners and stuff like this you don't see it right like a, the, that you, you can find and you can find some that are like that are well versed within the self-defense styles right and that's not what it looks like fighting fight the, the it's very nice and choreographed and i think it's a, it makes a really cool demonstration yeah um which could have some validity right because you know just drilling stuff sometimes you drill it one way and that's textbook and then what it looks like when you actually do it live is different. So that, that there's that that's, yeah. that's a possibility, of course. But to me, you know, I, I think that one of the things that has helped the self defense community sometimes is like they have moved away from that a bit, and you see a lot more focus on learning how to basically just take that fundamental jujitsu and do it with strikes, 
train it with strikes coming at you. There's a bit of boxing and, and like a lot of a lot of practitioners like myself have gotten involved with like mixed martial arts. And so then you learn boxing and kickboxing and, you know, you have wrestling and stuff like this. So you have better takedowns. Um, you have better mm -hmm. striking involved, right? So, because I mean, even Hickson, Hickson said this, he's like, you know, if I punch you, if you're a black belt, I punch you. Now you're a brown belt. I punch you again, you're a purple belt and so on. And I, <laughs> it's true. It, it's very true, bro. I mean, I'm telling you right now, probably one of the most frustrated times I've ever been in jujitsu was when I was getting ready for my very first MMA fight. And, uh, I'd never really been hit before from a, like a, a, a nice solid punch from a boxer, you know, maybe a, a couple scraps here and there, but not from a trained person. And I remember we had a, a guy that boxed. He was like a, you know, amateur golden gloves boxer that was doing jujitsu now. And uh, we put him, put the gloves on and went at it. And man, I remember that first training session. I was so mad at myself because I couldn't do anything with him because, you know, I was way better at jujitsu. He was a white belt. I was a purple. I was almost purple belt at the time. So I was like, we would roll at school, mm -hmm. put the gloves on. Boom, he's hitting me, and I'm trying to take him down, and I'm scrambling, and I'm wild, and it's crazy, bro. It's much different. And so once I got used to getting punched and understanding how to deal with the punches and how, how to block and how to roll with the punches, as they say, there is something to that because you learn how to, like, stay loose with it instead of getting tense. And when I learned how to do that, it's like, oh, this isn't so bad. Like, I've even had guys come into the gym who, like, like just as almost like a it's a hat trick. Put the, put the gloves on them. All right, man. Try to hit me. Try to hit, you're you're in my guard now. Try to hit me, mm -hmm. and they can't hit me because I'm able to block and everything else. Now the blocking stuff that was not like pure self defense, whatever. It was learning how to take the basic fundamental jujitsu that I had and adapt it to strikes and things like that. And I think that's important. Um, you know, so I think that a lot of those arts that have carried over in that sports side of jujitsu, which has a lot more intensity, um, and a lot of times, you know, not always because obviously there's plenty of butt scooters, but typically you learn some takedowns doing it, um, which I think is good for, for a fight situation and the intensity that it brings, which again, for anybody that's ever been in on a fight outside of the gym, it's an intense situation. Yes. You're not going to do sports style jujitsu necessarily, but you are going to feel that same intensity and being comfortable with that intensity is a great, tr uh, a transferable skill towards or ability rather an attribute to being in a fight i know that even from high school wrestling where all you're doing is like wrestling and whatever else and not knowing how to slamming someone on the ground works pretty well and once you're used to rolling with people and, and having someone grab you it's a re that you don't know yeah. it's a really useful ability mm -hmm. should you ever find yourself in a in a fight situation yeah i think it makes there, there's more variables it's a little more chaotic mm -hmm. you know there's a lot more going on you have someone you don't know yeah you have a lot more distractions people around it's it's more nerve-wracking there's a little more there's a different energy oh know, yeah in the air there's like an intensity you know um heart rate's going through the roof yeah being able to control and 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 kind of stay calm or even get to a state where you're calm or uh, or just to be comfortable not being calm yeah. right because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you're not gonna be calm sometimes right. you just gotta be like all right this is what it is well and even urgency you know like there's urgency in in a, a tournament Mm -hmm. or a match if there's a time limit obviously you're like okay so i'm down on points if it's a points based mm -hmm. thing you, you got to get urgent so say you get knocked down in a street fight you're on the ground you got to get up or you got to scramble or you mm -hmm. got to make something happen you can replicate that it, it replicates that in the safest way possible yeah. i think without it being like an mma fight or or something yeah. of that nature and you know it's also about sometimes having to wing it Sometimes you've got to improvise because yeah. when you go to a competition, sometimes <clears throat> the person doesn't engage the way that you want them to. Now you got to figure other things out. You got to you got to start just trying different things that you've got to improvise. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, in and that's a useful ability because I think it was Hickson that was or not Hickson, but a Hinzo was talking about being in a street fight. He was like talking about that jujitsu. While maybe sometimes they didn't practice certain scenarios because you can't possibly account for every variable that's going to be on the street, right? But your body awareness that you have, if anybody's trained for long enough, I mean, you know where you are in space. Yeah. You'll know if you're getting close to another group. You know everything that's going on. You just get this sixth sense about everything that's going on. You know where that person's hands are, the whole deal. And then you also kind of know what's going on around you. Because again, like when we're rolling, we're in tight spaces. And so we have to be aware of where we are around other people. And so you have to be aware of who else is around you and that kind of thing. And so there's a lot of useful transferable things from jujitsu that on the surface don't seem like they're that useful. But then when you think about how they could be, it could be, uh, could interact in a fight or something like that, super useful. But again, a lot of the self-defense stuff that I see now is really effective. And I think it's because they've 
taken other stuff from other places and incorporated it with the self-defense to make something that I think is better, right? Even the, um, even like the, 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 the way that they train, like making sure that people get hit a little bit, you know, when they're doing their self-defense stuff, you need to get popped a little bit. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you're kidding yourself. You have no clue what it would be like to get be in a fight. It makes you feel good. It's like, it's like someone going to like the gym and they put the sticker on their car that they got a gym membership yeah. and then they don't go. It's like, great. You got a sticker. You know, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you're not doing anything. It's like you could learn self-defense techniques and it might make you feel good that you know how to do something. But, in, but, but then again, until we have, if we don't give you some, and again, we can scale this depending on the person. It's not like we have to put you in there with like the, the MMA fighter who's getting ready to like clop, clop your, clobber your head off. We can scale it, but it's important that we stay true to that, that methodology that we have in combat sports, which is we got to test it under live conditions and if it don't work we don't use it mm -hmm. and that's where it goes back to being that anti-martial artist we're technical mercenaries we try things out and if it works we keep it if it doesn't we chuck it right right because we're, we're not we're not worried about oh man i got all this cool stuff great what are you going to do with it what we're worried about is does it work mm -hmm. you know and, and a lot of times in jiu-jitsu for instance i mean you'll You'll learn stuff that you don't use that's effective for other people because that's a body type thing. But there's, a, I mean, as we're in this this crowded space online where everybody's trying to get some attention, there's a lot of crap out there, you know, because it's just like, it's like they'll do, you see people doing things because it looks cool. I'm like, let me, let me see someone do it live against a, of, of against a really skilled opponent of mm -hmm. similar skill. And then you don't, you'll never see it. I'm like, because if I see it, I'll, 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 I'll uh, sign me up. Right. Now there's some moves that are pretty funky. That you'll see, like for instance, I have that that weird back take. It's really simple, but it looks flashy just because there's right. a roll involved, right? <laughs> but there's a lot of stuff out there. You're like, that's not going to work, you know. And if it does, then I'll I'll eat my words. But a lot of times, it's like you see it, and it's like it gets some likes on the internet, or whatever. It's cool. Yeah. It's a flashy move, but it's not. You're not going to use it. And so I think that that's when it goes back to you know you don't want to be that way. You want to be okay. Look, I'm trying to zero in. And that, to me, going back to it, that goes back to like old school martial arts where you had all these cool forms and all this cool flashy stuff. And then when the fight happens, pew, goes out the window because it may have been good technical moves, but it wasn't trained with the right methodology. Right. You know, you can see this even in different forms of karate where there's some types of karate that train their karate under like they're basically fighting or like, like if you look at different forms of karate, like they're basically doing kickboxing, like match. point karate or something where they're point actually karate, or there's, striking, or there's yeah. like, there's like, there's basically like a, and I'm going to butcher the name, but like uh, Kyokushin karate, right. right? Yeah. When they do, I mean, they're fighting, bro. I mean, they're beating. I, I've, <laughs> I've, you know, I've trained with a guy before who doesn't like, they're just getting, you're, you're getting hit all over your body. Yep. You can't punch to the face, but you get kicked to the face. And I mean, they, which sucks. They kick, <laughs> which, but, you know, I mean, some of those guys can kick they incredibly kick. well. Right. But you're getting beat up to your body. And whap. Now that's to me effective because they're trying it under like conditions to where they're testing themselves yep. out opposed to, we did these forms forever and we never actually tried it against a resisting opponent. So who knows if it would actually work? You know, you gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta test it out. And that's, I think super, super important. And you also can't restrict people say, well, well you can't do that. Like, because you know, in jujitsu, we have some boundaries on that. You can't punch me or something, yeah. but if some guy comes in and does like a wrestling move on you, takes your back, you can't say, Oh, you can't do that. That's not part of our, Oh, he did it. What are you going to do? Right? right. You got to figure it out. Yeah. Well, I saw, um, I taught class this morning. I saw a, um, this move for side control escape and I watched the video and I was like, the, the partner on top was very loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I tried to do it and I couldn't do it. Uh -huh. And then one of the people in class, like modified, like the positioning of yeah. the lapel and like how he wrapped around the leg and it, and it like worked yeah, in a way. Yeah, yeah. And we're like, wait a second. Cause, um, it, so it was like, okay, so you can even take some of these moves that maybe are a little kind of, um, <laughs> not going to work, but if you can, build off of them or try to make some modifications mm -hmm. you know i think that there's some value there i mean mm -hmm. you don't always want to i think you, you play with stuff and we get movements sure. all the time uh we get always uh you know like you'll show a technique and then you'll see I mean, we had joel on the podcast was talking about like groups of black belts we would do that and we start to just yeah test testing and we start to retest and we start what if we do this what if mm -hmm. we do that and then like sometimes it doesn't fit your body type mm -hmm. or the situation so can you modify and adapt it for those things right right so i, I think you you got to really look at a movement from all angles before you kind of throw it away because mm -hmm. there may be some value maybe even knowing what 
the hell doesn't work is going to give you an idea on what maybe will work and and, and vice versa. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure there's probably some sort of like uh, if you've ever seen ever read like Malcolm Gladwell's book Blink. I haven't read that one. So Blink, like one of the the basic stories of it is like he goes in and they, they look at this statue and they in, the, these people can instantly look at it and they were like, yeah, this is a fake. Mm. And they, but they couldn't articulate, how do you know it's a fake? And then they had to get into this thing where they started like comparing it to a real one and they started figuring out, well, what was off, right? But in yeah. the blink of an eye, they could tell something's off, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, a lot of times in jujitsu, like you, you can, you, you'll talk to black belt sometimes and look like, nah, that's not gonna work. You know, now sometimes they're wrong and we've all been wrong. And so you got to always keep an open mind. If someone starts doing it, you're like, oh, well, I gotta, I gotta eat my words and get in there because mm -hmm. someone's pioneering this move. But a lot of times there is a certain like thing that you'll see. And I've been more right about this and I've been wrong about this where I'm like, eh, I gonna see it. Like, cause mm -hmm. I like watching matches. That's sure. where I, where I like to watch stuff is I like watching matches and then if I find someone that has an instructional, I'd like watching their instructional and seeing if I can find them use it in the match mm -hmm. or in a role. Either yeah. one of those is fine. Um, you know what I mean? Because those are that tells me something. That's okay. That's that's useful, right? That's something that they're really using. Mm -hmm. And even if you watch matches, you see a certain level of repetitiveness to the techniques being used. You know, in a fight situation, going back to like fighting jujitsu, right? Fighting jujitsu is very simple, simplistic for the most part. There's some, you know, exceptions. But whether on the street, if it's used, um, or if it's in an MMA fight situation, you start to see that it gets used a very particular way. Yes. Over and over again, right? It's very, well, there it is. Like, it's that same stuff over and over and over again. And so that kind of like, that's a great place to look at stuff to just, it's the uh, it's the test. It's this, the litmus test. You can always try to pioneer something new and test things out. And that's what you should always try to be do because it's always evolving. Um but again, it's it's one of those things where you, you got to be careful where you put your eggs and what, what eggs you put. What am I trying to say here? The eggs you put in a particular basket. <laughs> <laughs> How much effort, time you put in the, you know, or belief in something yeah. as well. I mean, because you always have to test stuff out because that's part of keeping the beginner mind. Always test it out. Well, but you just, you, you got to be, you have to be in, you have to be smart about what you put, where, where we are today. With yes. like the internet and stuff like that where it is today, you have to be intelligent about where you put your attention sometimes um, and know the source because sometimes you you can be led astray thinking, oh, this stuff's going to be awesome. And you're like, then, you know, you're down the road, down the road. You're like, it's still yeah. not working. Well, look at, look at us as white belts. Myself as a white belt, one of the most valuable things that I did was compete. And I'm not saying you have to be a competitor, but one of the most valuable things when I was trying to establish a game in jujitsu mm -hmm. was, is my jujitsu any good? And does it work at all against someone that knows jujitsu? Mm -hmm. And so the, the way I knew that and the way I found out what to work on, because I had to work on a lot of shit and, and every white belt, you know, everyone has a lot to work on, but like when you're a white belt, there's just so much that you don't know. And, and it gave me some ideas. And like, maybe if you tighten this up a little mm -hmm. or, work on this area of your game that could open up and help other aspects of your game. So for me, competing was a way that I could test myself and see if my jujitsu was any good. Mm -hmm. um, and they also gave me direction, gave me some motivation, Sure, you know, like, all right, I'm on the right track. I'm doing good. I'm figuring it out. So I think as a, as a younger belt, if you're trying to figure out, you know, is your jujitsu good? Is the, the gym you train at decent? You know, you may be having certain training partners that you mm -hmm. do well against, but there's definitely a difference when you know, your training partners and you know their games right and versus someone you don't know and you're just giving them your best techniques to see can they stop mm -hmm. them because then again your techniques may be good but your training partner may know what they are and they'll know how to you know combat those techniques so i think com competition you know personally for me as a, as a white belt was really helpful and still is yeah and so you know to wrap this up guys you know the, the big idea that i'm trying to get you to take away today is just again uh, because you know again there's there's all different levels and you could be hearing this as a black belt and Maybe there's something that you notice that you're kind of resistant towards. And you're like, man, I shouldn't be, you know, just like the guys with the leg locks. Maybe sure. there's some part of your, sure. there's a part of your jujitsu where maybe you need to give it a little love, focus on it. Um, be open to what comes, you know, and, and don't be restricted to just what you're doing. Um, one of the things that you should do is always be like, just be on the hunt, like be a perpetual student and find stuff outside of the realm that you're in whether that's in the, the, the direct training area that you're in or even the, the sport specifically that you're in. Like I, I love watching like a lot of wrestling mm -hmm. see what they're doing. Cause there's sometimes there's some gyms in there and I, I know wrestling enough to be able to break stuff down. 
I'm like, huh, maybe I can try that in jujitsu. But break stuff down because, again, when you do that, then you give yourself a wider range to um, make new connections from. You, know, you have a wider, uh, a deeper sort of wider expanse of information to choose from that's yeah. not just restricted to what you're doing. And it's very, very useful. And um, it's something that's always been useful to me. And that's and when, I, when I get to the idea of being an anti-martial artist, it's like, again, going to the karate guy. Hey, do some jujitsu. I'm not doing that, you know. They should, obviously. They, I think if they want to be complete, all well-rounded. Now, if they just want to do karate, it's fine. Just like us, if someone comes along from a wrestling background or a judo background or something, and they have some move, and maybe it's different than what you're used to, mm-hmm. and maybe it gets you a little bit and you get frustrated, don't be so quick to throw it away. Say, what are you doing? Learn from it. Because, again, from the relatively short 18 years that I've been doing jiu-jitsu, the, the art has changed a ton. And a lot of the stuff that's influenced our sport and our and our martial art has come from outside. Yeah, it's basically stuff that a lot of us have taken and brought into it, and said, okay, and then we do it, and then now it's become basic Brazilian jiu jitsu, right? Like, but it's stuff that was originally from wrestling, or as a ju- judo kind of. We have a lot of relationship, obviously, with judo um, or sambo, right? We start sure. bringing the stuff in there, and we start using it. And now it becomes. It's grappling. It's jujitsu at this point. So just an idea to share with you, an idea for you to chew on, guys. Um, hopefully that one's useful to you. All right, guys. So hope you enjoyed that podcast. Um, as always, you're here. We're done. We're finished. So let's thank our sponsors. Big thanks to Charlotte's Web, charlottesweb.com. Promo code is jujitsu. You get 15% off the order on anything you, you want. Again, I uh, encourage you to try it out for a month. Give it a whirl. Some people have tried it, like my students-wise. Sometimes it doesn't do the same thing that it does for me. Other people, they then become, hey, man, this stuff was awesome. I got to get more of it. I've had that happen plenty of times. I've given, I give out samples to my students all the time, and sometimes they'll come back to me, hey, what strength is that? Or what's, which, which one is that? I want more of that. So I'm going to order some. So check them out if you want to. Um, Big thanks to Epic Roll, BJJ.com. You can check out Matt's website at that website address I just gave you, along with all the cool designs that he has, rash guard, geese, shorts, gear bags, the whole deal, everything on there. And you can get 15% off on the, using the promo code jujitsu. And then last, but again, certainly not least is manscaped. Again, they're, they're the premier male grooming below the belt. Although I'm a big fan of their stuff above the belt as well. Um, I've used, like I said, we've used, I've used their products for di- different stuff. I just want to test it out to see how it works. And again, everything that I've tried from this has been ex- uh, excellent quality from the packaging down to the actual product itself. Um, and it's all like, it's like manly stuff. Like it's not a, I don't know. Like again, it's just, it's not something that's like flowery. It's got a nice feel to it. Like a, I don't know. Like well, the products themselves quality are like, feel well, the, 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 the products themselves are like hardy, right? Like it's the difference. Like if you ever use a safety razor yeah. versus like a, like the, one of the, like the, the cheap razors that you've used to, you can feel the difference. Um, it's the difference between that and, and something like that. But also like everything like smells like it's for a man. It's for a man. It's not, it's, it's not for a woman. Right? <laughs> I mean, a woman can use it. Jess used it. She, she's used all their stuff too, just to try it out. She's like, let me see. So does my wife. She steals all she's this like, stuff. Let me try this right here. It works for them too, but yep. it, it, but it's going to make them smell like a man, mm. um, which hey, I don't mind. Yeah. Right. Um, I like the way you smell chewy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm rolling. Um, Ooh. But uh, check their stuff out at manscaped.com. Promo code is jujitsu 20. Save 20% on the order and get free shipping. And guys, if you want to, Join my True Crew email list, my newsletter. You can go to jujitsu.net. There is a, uh, I'm actually going to make a special one for you guys coming up in a week or two. But for right now, you can go to the website. There's a button that says for ebook. You click that, you can sign up for it. And that's where all the cool stuff that I'm doing or different stories and things like all that stuff. If you want to find out what I'm up to, that's the best place to do it. Um, also, um, if you guys are still listening to this, then, then you're the you're the dedicated type. So, um, Keep an eye out because on August, the dates up here, August the 27th through the 29th, I'm going to be doing my very first jiu jitsu camp at my gym. And if you guys would like to join, I'm going to have about 20 or so spots at, I think, maybe more, maybe less, depends. Um, but, but I'm going to have a camp at my gym. It'll be obviously we'll be doing jujitsu training. We'll do some hangouts and things like that. I'm also going to have a few other cool things that I have planned, which I'll tell you more about later on. Uh, but if you guys want to check that out, the best place to do that is get on the, the my email newsletter list so that this way when I come out with details that um, you can also check Instagram and stuff like that. The reason I say the email list, because 
I've had so many people like they're on my Instagram and you know, it, basically think about how many followers you have. Like sometimes you just, you have a bunch and you may not see any of their stuff for months and then something pops up sometimes mm. randomly, you know? And so you may, you'll, you'll probably miss out if it's just that, but if you are a email subscriber, you're going to get all the details whenever they come out, because that's typically who gets first crack at everything. Um, the, uh, the two crew. So that, and then uh, if you want to uh, check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast, all the content that we have in there from the podcast extras, the roles, everything, all that included, along with the um, live calls from time to time, uh, usually about twice a month. You can check that out at that website, patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast. And guys, with that said, that was the end of the podcast. Hope you had a fun time. Hope you got something useful to chew on and I'll talk to you guys next week.